last time on Sprig Plays Lamento Beyond the Void. Going away. Escape to the right. What about you? No time to talk. Just go. Hurry. What are you gonna do, big guy? Uh, hey! Before Konoe could tell him to stop, Asato lowered his stance and plunged into the front line at full force. Asato smoothly drew his dark, gleaming sword. Asato! You bastard, what are you doing? Your mother gave birth to a terrible cat. No, not a cat. A detestable child sent to destroy us. A monster. The elder spat with a sneer. I am. I am not a monster. The deep howl made the cats of Kira freeze up. Well, this is interesting. Heal. He's cursed. Listen carefully. That cat escaped because of you. You are responsible. Bring him back here. Kill him. He is a cat of Meiji. He cannot be left alive. This is an order. I will not tolerate failure, he slowly declared. And here we go. It was an order. Konoe, the cursed cat, different from the people of Kira. Kill him. If he didn't kill him, Asato wouldn't be able to return to his village. As if to reassure himself, he repeated that to himself over and over while he ran from the dark village. Kill Konoe. It was simple. Why should he hesitate to kill a cat he'd only gotten acquainted with the day before? If what the Elder said was true, and Konoe really was a Meiji, then he couldn't let him escape with his life. But, he had such pretty eyes. Asato remembered them vividly. When they faced each other, Konoe's eyes were honest and unafraid. They'd startled him when he first saw them. They were strong-willed and powerful. The light that shone in the eyes of the Kirin cats was brave, but it was nothing more than the urge to fight and kill. They were empty. Besides that, Konoe had also said... He had said he was beautiful too. Someone like him. Unable to stand these emotions any longer, Asato grit his teeth. Why was he so conflicted? He had to kill him. He would kill him. Asato solemnly told himself only that. Dragging his weary body, Konoe pushed aside the tall grass. In the depths of the forest, he leaned against the trunk of a tall tree and let out a quiet sigh. He sat down without thinking of anything, but luckily the place hasn't been touched by the void yet. He didn't want to move. Anything else seemed impossible. Konoe instantly closed his eyes. When his view was shut off, his other senses became sharper. The cold wind rocking the treetops tickled the fur on his ears. What happened to the cats of Kira? The hair all over his body stood on end as he remembered the ferocity of their emotions. Something was wrong. He'd felt the same thing with the bandits too. Suddenly, he remembered that clown, Fury, the presence of a third party, Someone whose name or face Conway didn't know was watching him, laughing, beckoning, manipulating him. The thoughts floated into his mind suddenly. Could that be it? But one thought struck him above anything else. The bandits and Kieran Katz had also been manipulated. But why? For what purpose? This series of events seemed like a nightmare to him. It was too strange, so... Conway was unable to connect the realities inside him. He couldn't tie them together. Conway wondered if, back in Kira, Asato was alright. He was kind to him and had helped him escape. When they were surrounded, the Kirin cats had turned their hatred towards Asato. He could never forget the eyes of the Kirin elder, watching Asato like he was looking at something detestable. Konoe pulled a flask from his drawstring bag and lapped up some water. The lukewarm water didn't quiet his muddy thoughts. Konoe sighed. 
From between the dark trees, the pale light of the night moon quietly poured down. He felt like it had been an insanely long time since he'd seen it. Even though he probably shook the Kirin cat chasing him, there may have been more pursuers. He always kept his ears pricked to survey his surroundings. The sound of the wind. A strange cry from the stirring trees. Apart from that, he didn't hear anything in particular. Slowly, Konoe laid down. His empathy pains had completely dissipated now. He'd rather just have all his feelings disappear from his own soul. He wanted to be freed. If he could do that, he wouldn't suffer so much. The words sank little by little into his exhausted thoughts. Then, a sound pushed in. Different sounds. Uh -huh. Konoe jumped up. His ears twitched. Footsteps. The sound of the trees and plants being pushed aside, and the earth being kicked up. Something was running at great speed. It was coming this way. Is it a Sato, or white-haired cat, or silver-haired cat from earlier? Someone else entirely. A pursuer from Kira? His body was heavy as lead, but he immediately got up to run away. A dark mass leapt out of the foliage. The body tangled with his own and they fell to the ground, hissing in violent threat. They grappled with each other, aiming for hair and skin. Conway couldn't recognize the figure. For a moment he wondered if it was a monster, but there was something familiar about its scent. Their throats shouted with heated growls. Even though they brandished no weapons, they fought wildly. Conway bit the ear of his opponent who'd pinned him to the ground, and then kneed him in the stomach with all his might. A growl of pain and anger sounded from overhead. Conway felt an ache at his throat, too. It had been bitten. Claws sank into his shoulder. Is it sin? Did he pursue him into the forest? In the middle of their fighting, Something flowed into his chest, the emotions of his opponent. Conway tried to control himself so they didn't enter too deeply, imagining an invisible wall in his soul that blocked them out. Don't come. Don't come in. But... While he struggled against his opponent, Conway felt a mysterious feeling. He knew this feeling well, a familiar emotion that came in waves. Asato? Before he could process the thought, Conway blurted out the name. Asato's body twitched. Asato, just like he thought, he was slightly relieved, but just for a moment. Kill. Ah. Uh. Conway's eyes widened at the low mutter in his ear. Kill him? Why? Conway tried to reflexively hold on to doubt, but his thoughts soon changed. It made sense if he thought about it because Asato was also a Kira cat. Still, he was considerably shocked when he began to consider it more. Conway remembered Asato's modest and reserved gaze. Kuh. Conway was confused, but suddenly a strong pain surged through his shoulder. He'd been bitten. He grimaced in pain. This was real pain, and there was no time to think. If he wasted any more time, he'd be killed. Clenching his teeth to bear the intense pain in his shoulder, Conway gathered up his power in his lower abdomen. He clung to Asato's body and kicked his knee into the other cat's stomach with all his might. Once, twice, he felt the presence of his breathing begin to fade. The fangs dug into his shoulder pulled away, but the hand now tightened around Conway's throat. It closed in, strangling him. <laughs> his sight blurred from the oncoming suffocation. In his dimming view, Conway's eyes met Asato's for the first time. When their eyes met, he almost relaxed. You. And there was no hatred or anger in Asato's eyes. Sato's face was frowning as if he were about to cry. It wasn't from the pain of Conway's attacks. Asato's eyebrows were knitted tight and he looked like a helpless child who was doing something terrible. Even while he made such a face, Asato steadily constricted Conway's throat. Conway needed to stop him. Conway lifted one hand with what was left of his strength and lashed out at Asato's face. Ugh. A low growl sounded, and the tightening on his throat loosened. 
He used both hands to push away the cat on top of him, crawling along the ground to escape from Asato. Trying to catch him again, Asato reached an arm out towards him. When Konoe twisted his body, he saw a tail with short black hair out of the corner of his eye. With no time to think, he grabbed it and bit the tip. Ugh. Asato let out a yelp of pain as he trembled and fell down. The tail was a weak spot, but while he was trying to catch Konoe, he seemed to have become a bit careless. After throwing Asato off him completely, Konoe clung to the ground, hung his head, and coughed violently. Konoe couldn't shake the feeling of bile rising in his throat, and he felt nauseous. Several drops of saliva spilled down. He felt someone getting up behind him and looked back. He was still determined. His tail stood on end and bristled out. Asato knelt down. His shoulders were rising and falling heavily with his breathing, and he bared his fangs while glaring at Konoe. In addition to a murderous urge, though, Konoe saw a perplexed light flickering in his deep blue eyes. Ew. He was all over the place, in both thought and action. Konoe thought this as he looked into Asato's eyes. Still confused, Konoe stared Asato down as if to challenge him. You're going to kill me? Uh... Sato's shoulders shook in surprise. He clenched both hands into fists. I... am going to kill you. I have to kill you. It's an order from our elder. If I don't... His awkward words staggered as he gasped for air. Konoe narrowed his eyes and watched Asato. Why did he seem so pained? They'd only exchanged a few words over the course of the night. He wanted to know what Asato was feeling. Not just through his barely restrained empathy. If he did, he'd know. But he didn't want that. Konoe didn't want to use that power to peer into the hearts of others. He didn't ask for that. He wanted to speak. To hear it expressed through words. When he tried to ask, he was unable to. There was the sharp sound of something slicing the air. When they faced each other, a dazzling light shot past them. He was blinded. A whir of wind passed by a split second later and their clothes and hair fluttered. What was it? The sound of an explosion followed right after. <laughs> he looked behind him. Black smoke rose from the ground a short distance away. Conway caught the scent of something singed. Then he turned to look where the light had come from. Before them, hidden in the dark groves, stood a red shadow. Is it Fury? Vivid red and swaying like heat waves. What is it? A cat? Their brows furrowed uneasily. Two ears protruded from the head of the shadow. They seemed off. They weren't ears at all. Sato was watching too, and suddenly his body stiffened. That thing. You know him? I saw it in the village, and everyone became weird. Eh? Conway heard the sound of a sharp wind again. Uh. <sighs> Again, that light. They jumped to the side and laid down on the ground. Jesus. He met eyes with Asato, who jumped the other way from Konoe, and as they lifted their faces, there was another explosion. It passed before their eyes. The red shadow was gradually coming closer. They saw its lips, smiling thinly and both of them shivered. What is that? I don't know. There's something growing out of its head. Are those horns? Horns? Asato nodded without taking his eyes off the red shadow. A wicked existence with horns bigger than fangs and a glossy tail. I heard that things like that could be summoned into evil ceremonies by followers of dark gods. If that was the case, Conway had heard about them too. But it was only spoken of in legend. No one he knew had ever seen one. He always thought they were just stories and dreams. Is that what it is? Then what is it doing here? I don't know. But maybe. And everyone in the village became weird. It's coming. Asado stopped speaking and keenly narrowed his eyes. The shadow was in the darkness, so he couldn't see its features until it came closer. Just like Asato said, those things growing out of its head were definitely not ears. They were horns. 
thick and long like fangs. Thump, his heart beat. The red snake, its shadow slithered through his mind. The marks on his body stirred. Why was this happening now? Conway had no time to think of an answer. The shadow slowly lifted its hand and aimed at Conaway. Dazzling light burst forth. Ah! Uh, he kicked off the dirt and jumped towards Asato. Right after, the explosion roared in his ears. A burning scent drifted and gripped his chest. The ground where Conway had stood just a moment before was now a hollow crater giving off smoke. If it was something like Asato said, they had no hope of winning. When Conway got up, a scathing pain ran through his chest. He frowned and staggered. Uh. Konaway, it's nothing. This pain, it was the same as when he empathized with someone, but there was no one around him. Was it because of the red shadow? Putting away his unrest and doubt, Konaway grabbed Asato's arm and ran. He didn't know in which direction they ran. Sometimes, he saw spheres of light exploding right beside them. Each time it happened, a chill ran down his spine. Conway ran as fast as he could, and their opponent was slow. Even so, the distance between them didn't seem to increase. Was it still after them? He ran through the gaps between the trees, bounding over their protruding roots. Suddenly, he felt like the atmosphere around them shifted. The scene reflected in their view was still the same. There was definitely something there. <clears throat> Sato's body fell forward. His movement stopped as if he were frozen, and he knelt down on the ground. Hey, what's wrong? This place. Asato watched Konaway, his expression stiff, his short-furred black tail raised up in front of his eyes. There was a mark on the tip, the fur stained with blood. When Konway looked at him as if to ask whether or not he was hurt, Asato shook his head. It's the grass. The words made Konway's blood run cold. Konway looked around. At first glance, nothing appeared to have changed in the forest night. But if Konway looked more closely, he could see that the colors shone vividly even though they should have been shrouded in darkness. The grass, the trees, and their leaves, they all seemed to emit light on their own. It was brilliant as if it was poisonous. Konaway touched a fingertip to a fallen leaf, and a thin red line ran over the pad of his finger. It had been rejected. Oh, that's right. Any, like, trees or plant life or anything that have been infected with the curse or, like, antimatter. Or well, reject, like, like it says. Cut you up? Eat you up? Something like that. It's the void! Konaway clicked his tongue. Since when had this place been eroded so far? They kept running into the depths of the woods unaware. Their bodies may have been sliced apart by the leaves, branches, and grass. He turned around. The red shadow didn't speed up and steadily approached them. One hand raised up slowly. There was nothing else they could do. When Konaway looked at Asato, he seemed to be thinking exactly the same. Powerful eyes looked back at him. Can you move? Yeah. Asato nodded and stood. He's aiming at me. If he keeps doing that, you have a chance to stab him. Got it. For now, they didn't need to say more than that. There was no room to weave past him, and neither of them knew what else they could do. Conway crouched down and glared at the advancing shadow. The shadow laughed at him. The tail of the red snake wiggled inside Conway, making him rather nauseous. Red flashed through his vision as the wicked heat waves swayed. At the same time, a spherical light was cast. Conway pushed his body forward. He felt Asato move behind him. The light flashes and explosions repeated. Conway kept running closer, barely avoiding being hit by that light. He felt heat graze his cheeks and his hair fluttered as the light flew past. The shadow approached before his eyes and it raised its hand, greatly opening its palm. Light was created. Yeah. There was something that flew overhead. Conway clashed with the red shadow, then jumped and rolled to the side. 
Masato, who had been hidden in the darkness of the trees, leapt into the air. He swung his sword, bearing it down upon the Red Shadow's head. A heavily confined sound echoed. He did it. But there was neither blood nor the screams Konoe was expecting. Even though the attack had certainly hit its mark, the Red Shadow's figure wavered and slowly sank down to its knees. Blowing crimson hair covered its face. Asato watched the Shadow's kneeling posture where it had landed, right in front of Konoe. There was strained silence, as if time had stopped. They gasped when the sound of something breaking reached their ears. Huh. But Konoe saw left him speechless. A crack ran down from the kneeling figure's face, coursing down to its chest. Like ivy, the crack sprawled out over its entire body, until finally... The red shadow broke into countless tiny pieces, letting out a delicate sound. Metal mixed with the red fragments that caught the light of the moon of shadow, and glittered as they scattered to the wind, drifting to the forest floor like red snow. It was beautiful, Konoe thought, even at a time like this. Konoe. Konoe heard Asato call him, and snapped back to his senses. Asato ran to him, his sword in his hands. Are you hurt? I'm fine. How about you? I'm alright. Asato nodded and looked towards where the red shadow once stood. His profile showed a vivid, complex color reflected clearly in his eyes. Konoe felt uneasy and lightheaded. Nothing seemed real. It was like he just emerged from a dream. It was disappointing. That was his honest impression. Why did such a wicked existence from legend fall so easily? There was a hole in his heart that told him something was missing here. The red shards that floated through the sky gradually faded and disappeared. The air itself seemed to be glowing with color. He watched the fantastic sight for a while, but then remembered his own predicament. Conway narrowed his eyes to the left, towards the road he'd continued to take. In the jet-black darkness of night, the trees and flowers glowed with a vivid, too beautiful light. It was the poison of the void. Let's get out of here. Yeah. They returned to the path they'd run down. Exposed in the lonely moonlight were many hollowed out tree trunks and earth. Sato let out a sharp sigh. When Conway glanced at him, he saw fatigue hanging on the edge of his expression. He thought about it. Walking shoulder to shoulder with Asato like this was strange. Just a few minutes ago, they'd been a hunter and the hunted. Rebecca didn't usually work together, but when they faced the same enemy, Asato's body moved naturally. This was the first time Konoe hadn't fought alone, and it must have been the same for Asato. Konoe couldn't feel any bloodlust from Asato now. When Asato attacked him earlier, why did he look like he was ready to cry? Konoe wanted to know why. Slowly walking in exhausted silence, the two of them looked for a place where they could rest. 